Warning. The Dub Talk podcast may contain language and content that may not be suitable for younger audiences. Listener discretion is advised. There will also be spoilers for various anime throughout the course of this episode. Please use caution in case we discuss a series that you have yet to finish. Finally, the opinions expressed are those of the individual participants and will not reflect the Dub Talk podcast as a whole. Enjoy the show. What's up, fellow writers? It's me, Megan, the member of the Dub Talk Angels. Tonight, we're here to get on our bikes and ride. With me, I've got our favorite uh, skeleton rider, Amon. <laughs> Spell joke. <clears throat> I've got the anime maestro, Noah. You know, I, I gotta say, when I wished for another new Kino's Journey anime, I didn't realize we were just going to get focus on just the motorcycle. And we've got our favorite baby girl, Andrew. I'm here to eat ass and cry over sad anime girls. And guess what? I'm all out of tissues to cry over sad anime girls. You eat ass? As long as you don't go ass to mouth, it's all prior game. That sounds a little less wholesome than this show is, honestly. Just a little bit. I sort of miscalculated. <laughs> That's Yeah, but surprisingly, for, for this group of raunchy... Uh, sinful individuals. We're going for something a little more on the the pleasant healing side of anime. I was gonna say, I guess Andrew wants to trip down the Hershey Highway. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I regret this already immediately. Man, not even not even the three minute mark. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> New record. Uh, any percent speed run. Andrew going to hell. Any percent. A- Andrew percent speed. Run. What she said. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dumb Talk. Uh, it is, uh, it's time to do uh, the annual thing because once again, I've grabbed, I can't say I grabbed the senior citizen of Weeb Squad, Andrew. You're here and you're under 30. Yay? Yay. How is that? Wait, wait, how, how is the, uh, even those of us who are in like our, you know, early 30s, that that's nowhere near considered senior citizen enough. You don't it is in the anime. Speak, speak, speak so. for yourself. Spiritually, I am old, and I always have been. Uh, okay, spiritually, okay, but, spiritually, but, Amon has had his AARP card for the last 15 years. I oh, like I skeletons because fair. I am also dead <laughs> from age. No, but you know in the anime community that, it, like, once you turn 20, your knees no longer work. Once you turn 25, it's time for you to get out of the fandom. And once you're 30, they're preparing the funeral march. I, I just know one of my favorite images um, from... It, one of my favorite Twitter images about like growing older is like once you hit 30 and it's just an image from Avatar The Last Airbender going, I took away your bending. Wait, you're bending? <laughs> <laughs> no, what makes you feel old is when people say, are you into old school anime and it's a picture of Sword Art Online? <laughs> God, that is a well, decade old now, shit. I, have, I just have one request then, Megan. If we are on the verge of death and our funeral is coming up, can we get Jun Maeda to be one of the palm bearers so he can let us down one last time? Jesus Christ, Noah, yes. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> only if Stephen Foster is there to help. Oh, he's going to be on a commentary track coming up soon. I, yeah, I know. I am actually pretty curious about that. I, I I can't deny it. I am too. I want to know if it's like for one episode or the whole show. Yes. You know what? Let's get us back on track. Let's get us on the right road. Uh, so tonight, guys, we are here to celebrate my birthday. Yay. Merry birthmas. Happy birthday. Uh, so, I decided... (laughs) Every time we get to try to make another comment, no one just starts going on. I'll stop. Anyways, congratulations on making it one more year around the sun. Unfortunately. Um, (laughs) as horrible as that sounds. Better than the alternative. You know what? Yeah, fair. Um... So tonight we are here to talk about the uh, an anime that got a dub this year. Um, I know, holy shit, what a description. Um, <laughs> and that is 
the 2021 missed little gem of a show called Super Cub. Uh, this was in the, I believe, the spring of 2021. Yeah, it was the spring of 2021. And I know it was a series that when, at the time, before they had been, uh, their body was like my, my made an abyss into Hime's Crunchyroll body. Uh, this was that show that I think a lot of, <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like at the two-thirds mark of the second season of Made in Abyss, and I've got terrible, terrible images when you mention see, it, see, absorbed. And... See, I realize what you're going for is the fact that Funimation is now Crunchyroll, but my, yeah. my usual go-to is I compare it to, like, Funimation is technically wearing Crunchyroll like a skin suit from Golden Kamoy. Yeah. Ooh. I was gonna say, because uh, Noah's here, and I don't know how much of Golden Calm we Noah has seen. Uh, I was going for something more in his wheelhouse, which means that uh, Crunchy Ro- uh, Funimation Soul was a uh, poop and a mud into Hime's body. Um, I will not apologize for that image that you're saying. I don't um, want to know what that means. I- I'm glad you're getting all of your like more. Uh, grotesque descriptions out now because the the show itself super yeah cool, like doesn't I'm trying, have any of that. I'm trying to wean out so much dumb shit and nastiness like as fast as possible oh, because excellent. this show does not deserve that. Okay, let no. let's just let's just do the seven forbidden words in the prayer circle right now and get out of our system. Shit, bitch, cock, ass, fuck, twat, and tits. Shit, bitch, cock, ass, fuck, twat, and tits. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Oh. <laughs> Ah, it seems like George Carlin is wearing Andrew like a skin suit tonight. Um, there could be worse people piloting this. Would you feel more comfortable if I'm now saying that Funimation is Ratatouille and Hime? Yes, yeah, there you go. You know Everyone that, would get that reference. That actually does work, yes. Alright, so now there's a tiny little purple rat sitting on Hime's head, controlling her from <laughs> under her giant bow. Yeah, I can work with this. So... Back when uh, this show, I got first picked up by the Purple Rat. Um, everyone kind of was super cynical about it that I remember. Everyone's like, "What the fuck is this advertisement?" Ass bullshit of an anime. Oh, this isn't this isn't like four minutes long and animated by Rie Matsumoto. This is one of these things where I'm happy it exists. I also don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how some guy tricked an anime studio into funding his weird little motorbike passion project. Yeah, because as I've learned, this apparently was a web novel. Yep. Like, I don't... This this is a book series. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and apparently, like, I don't think any, like, Honda fucking uh, market money, like, went up that and puppeted that. I think this dude just really likes the Super Cup. Yeah, like, I think Honda's involved in that they got permission to use their designs and so on, but, like, so, they don't... I don't think they, like, are actually involved in the production of this otherwise. So it's... Not from what I can tell. So it's, it's less it, It's less that Honda was directly funding this, and more the fact that they got permission to use the Honda logo the same way they have to get permission to use the Mikasa Company Volleyball in Q. Yeah, it's or, yeah. Or they have, they have to get Yamaha to sign off on instruments in any Kyoani show that they put them in. They they are involved to the extent that they don't have to call it like a a, a no a, a bomb a Bonda bike or something. You know, one of their silly you know slightly or, hurt sats logos or, or goggles and, or, or goggles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. But but they can't use the copyright of Seven Eleven, so they had to turn that into like. The eight bear mini mart or whatever. The bear that would, eight. That, that, would, that would cost a lot of money. Seven Eleven is very popular in Japan. That is true. And Seven Eleven is very hard to work with. Not that I've had experience, but they don't answer to anybody. <laughs> except, don't ask me what I do the, my off time. <laughs> so the, except except for that one time, except for that one time, they got told to not be a narc. Um. So the important thing is that, despite the entire surface. This is not actually an intended commercial. This is just somebody who's really into this specific subsect of bikes. They have mm-hmm. a hyper fixation. That fixation is the Honda Super Cub. Um, which it could, yeah, this whole thing could be an endorsement of the hobby of biking. It doesn't have to be just about the Super Cub. But it, it's kind of nice they add that realism of, no, we're going to actually call out a real model because, and not just say, like, generic motorbike vehicle. And they go over multiple different types of cubs. 
that they do. Like this is like this is like the Kino Journeys guys wet dream about guns, but with motorcycles. Like it, if you wanted me to point at what I would describe as like a more obvious appealing this subsect of hobby to like weeaboos, I would look at a show called like Bakuan. Which, I don't know if anybody has actually seen Baku on here, but that is a show that literally has the anime ver anime girl equivalent of The Sting. And, like, one of, like, the more infamous moments from that show is, like, the girls washing their bikes and doing that thing that you do sometimes when you are anime and you have hot anime girls washing bikes. Except for they're, like, they look like they're 12. I will let you be right. the judge of that, but uh, I'll just post a picture of the show in case you're curious. But so, so, so kind of sort of. So I'll set up. So what actually happens in the show? Like, we've established that uh, it's a giant Honda commercial. It's What's not... the plot? So the plot is the story of a girl named Koguma. She has no parents, no hobbies, no friends. Her life is a sad existence in muted palettes in a city where just she's got nothing man she eats sad ass no, toast every morning she eats sad toast she doesn't have a lot of money she eats curry out of uh out of a box and has to use the microwave it's cool and everyone makes and it seems like the other kids make fun of her for being so lonely there, there's literally one kid one girl in the first episode who two makes girls, a crack it's about the it's two girls in the second episode but yeah, they make a crack about money must be tight because she because uh, Koguma pulls out like the cheap the largest material for a home ec project. Basically, one day she's riding and she gets overtaken by another girl on a bike who will be important for later. Um, and while she's on her bike, uh, one day she goes, "Man, maybe I should get something else to go to school because I gotta go uphill so much." So she goes to the local shop called Chino's and is introduced to the world's most cursed super cub because three of its owners have died. And from there, Koguma's life goes from a sad, dreary existence to that of a better one because she has her super cub and her super cub can save any day. And there's battles against life's little daily things. And honestly, as cynical as you can be about this show, it's actually got a very heartfelt ending and it's 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 less of the show about like you know wow this is so cool how how the super cub is like the ultimate bike and it makes your life better by just existing and stuff it it's more or less a series about how just you know trying to just take the different path in life or like um just doing something else can can make your life a brighter place and your day a little bit better. Super Cup, Super Cup is less a show about how the Honda Super Cup is going to make you more attractive to everybody that sees you riding it, and more about the fact that even in a boring, bleak existence, just the little things in life and just doing the little things to make life a little more exciting can make all the difference. And that's kind of charming. I'd like to compare it to a everyone's favorite TV show, King of the Hill. Because there is an episode where Hank describes how his passion in life, like, you have to find one thing that you can use to make your life a little bit brighter. You don't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be grandeur. His thing is the lawn. He loves to make his lawn just the best. Uh, our character fixes up her pool. This show deposits that if you don't have a purpose in life and you're not really going anywhere... Find one hobby, and they just happen to fixate on motorbikes for this one, and yes, you will buy all the accessories, yes, you will find a cult to be a part of, but it will brighten up your dreary life and add oversaturated colors to that non-existent existence you previously had. What cult? The cult of having a fucking gearhead lesbian wife? Hell yeah! Don't tell me you weren't jealous by the end. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> But yes, Alman and I are just sitting here show. like, so if this is like, okay, so if this is the the Japanese King of the Hill, because as we all know, King of the Hill is the Texas of anime, mm -hmm. um, 
which one of us is which member of King of the Hill? Uh, Amon's gotta be Boomhauer. I, I, I was going to say, Amon is 120% Boomhauer. Let me t- tell you what, man, them skeletons is all, you know, bookmark, and yeah, them, don't them read a book. And... Them ghosts, yeah, they're everywhere. You don't want to run down the land night. That'd be terrible. <laughs> So which okay so am I am I am I am I the the, the fat guy? Are you bi- a dotery? Uh, I, Bill. Honestly, no, I'm probably more of that particular so character. Do I get? Do, that means I get to be Hank. Look, look, I'm sorry, but you, Megan, because yes. you are from Florida, you do get into the. Uh, I'm sorry, you're around the conspiracy theory people, so we might have to make you Dale. I'm sorry, we might just have to do that. Look, can I be Bobby? Can I be Bobby? Yes. Please, I know. <laughs> you can be Bobby because while, yes! Hank, while Hank is the best of the group, you are cursed with having no ass, and that might be a face w- fate worse than death. <laughs> what? And you and you thought that we were gonna have a short episode tonight? <laughs> so fucking super. <laughs> cup. Anyway, so uh, talking about super cup, super cup du- was given a dub, and it was actually dubbed. <clears throat> Ahem, let me get the correct studio about the... Um, Patrick's gonna come for you. Um. But, uh. Super Cub uh, was put out on Blu ray this year. You can currently buy it. But, um. It was dubbed by our friends over at. I'm trying to get the studio name again. Central Command Studios. Yes. Over at Central Command Studios. And it was helmed by one Geoff Bizante, uh, and it was uh, given its script by Jared, uh, Jared Green, who is in-house at uh, Crunchy Mation Ratatouille he <laughs> made. Um, so quickly to go over their work, Jeff is a prolific ADR engineer. He is one of the most prolific ADR engineers out there um but this is i believe this was actually his first solo directing gig really i i can believe that yeah no it well i remember him making tweets that it was his first solo directing gig oh good for him okay um yeah Mm. uh and jared has written a lot of things but jeff was also the assistant director on king king's raid successors of the will as well as Two show, uh, two seasons of a franchise that has zero connections to, uh, Super Cub's level of taste, grace, and elegance. That being, uh, Ikitosin, Extravaganza, Epoch, and Shin Ikitosin. I really learned a lot this year at how buck wild the, uh, cast history of Ikitosin as a series is. It's what, yeah, with the. Uh, amount of time that show's been around in the different studios that have taken a crack at the multiple seasons. I'm just kind of impressed somebody still made a new one in the year of our Lord 2022. And that people were excited for it. Good for them. Good for them. Um, still, and... holding out, still holding out hope for that third season of um, Rosario Vampire. Uh, never. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. <laughs> but maybe we can get a, uh, a Ghost Reaper Girl anime. That'd be nice. Yeah. More Ghost Reapers, less Ayakashi Triangles. Um, Jared Green, you'll know as the writer of Decadence, Life Lessons with Urumichi Onisan, another series about a person with a gloomy life. (laughs) And probably more in tone with the tone of this series, that being uh, Stars Align. So, gentlemen, how do you feel about this? I I wouldn't compare this to Stars Align at all. I... Yeah, there's there's way there's there's not enough parents to beat Kogama. No, no. no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, fair, but ooh. That raises the question: What's worse, no parents or stars aligned parents? <laughs> stars aligned parents. Yes. But in stars aligned, nobody gets a nobody gets a rad ass motorcycle. So, I guess. Gotta go with the no parents route. Man, this got dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the other thing I'll say, because you mentioned that uh, 
Jeff has been a pretty regular and consistent ADR engineer throughout his history. It's also worth mentioning he is the engineer as well as the director of this project, too. Mm -hmm. So almost the entirety of this is his own mo motor oil, sweat, and tears. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is a very unique show in its presentation in that it is quiet but not muted yeah it's dialogue less or it's I'm sorry, not entirely mute but it, it relies way less on the dialogue and more on the sounds of the breath sounds the vehicle sounds the sounds of nature and that's the stuff that is absolutely dependent upon the engineer so when you say that the ADR director was also the engineer for this, that makes sense. That means that they really emphasized every spit string, every stray sound, every breath effect to convey that essence of a healing anime that Super Cub is obviously going for. It's this unique it, it's this unique audio experience in that it is like somber and chill. The world is empty, but the world does not feel void. It's empty, but not void in the sense that it is like, it is quiet. It is a small town vibe, but the world itself is not an empty void of nothingness. The world itself is as much of a alive, breathing character as anybody else in the show. And a lot of that is in the direction and especially in the sound design throughout the entirety of this this jovial bike ride. Did anybody notice that in the first episode particularly, that there's almost no music, but the few places where music does pop up are like the most upbeat parts of the show. When she gets her, uh, when she gets her Super Cub, or when she's riding it, it's like the only parts of the show where there is any background music. I... Yeah, actually, yeah, that is that is a fair point, especially in the early episode. That that checks out. I think the dub's really interesting, especially I think in those early episodes because of how it sounds compared to um, how do I put the thing that kept coming to mind when I was watching this is like something I've seen Mike Tool occasionally talk about, where he'll talk about how anime fans have this definition of what slice of life shows are. But the problem is most of the things anime fans call slice of life shows, oh, yeah. like you know, they're usually like sitcoms, yeah, or or soap mm -hmm. operas. Like they're not actually very indicative of how that term is used in like criticism of any other sort of medium or genre. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, because a, an anime slice of life usually has like wackier situations or yeah, yeah stuff well, that like, you know, doesn't actually happen know, in your real life. Well, it's, you know, it's like uh, you know, people, you know, Lucky Star for I think for uh, certainly when I was. Uh, younger like like oh it's a slice of life and it's like lucky star is like one degree removed from seinfeld that's not slice of life <laughs> this is slice of life yeah or at least this is way closer to what people like in non-anime criticism when they're using that term they're much more describing something like this of it's very it's not you know it's very grounded it's very much about like uh, you know, in this case, like, kind of, it's focusing on a specific thing. In this case, sort of, you know, motorcycle enthusiasm. There's not a lot of... I mean, there's humor and there's, like, silly bits, like the, the ladies' diner, which we'll get to later, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, it's much more about, like, you know, you know her, her first time out, one of her first times out with her bike, she can't get to start, and it's like, oh, it ran out of gas. How do I refill this thing? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's all very... So what do you made a crack about how like towards in, like the episode ten we finally got stakes? I believe that was me because <laughs> that was you. Yeah, it's a very it's a very low key. I, th I think the dove actually does a good job of capturing this. It's a very like low key and sort of naturalistic feeling show. Um, to the point where the only, I was trying to think of like what anime does this remind me of, and it's like this kind of reminds me of Sunny Boy. Like Sunny Boy is a lot more knowingly artistic and out there than this, but. It has that same sense of, like, it's very quiet, and it's not in a big hurry to get anywhere, and I don't think it particularly cares if the majority of viewers jive with it or not. It's it's just gonna do its thing. Like, knowing the yeah. fact that this is a novel in itself explains a lot to me. 
I kind of just thought this was an original production, so knowing this was just something a guy wrote makes a lot more <laughs> sense. It's not an entirely original story, but uh, to note on the production side, this was animated by a relatively unknown studio named Studio Kai, and the director, the Japanese director, this was his first solo directing job, it looks like. Uh, he's had, like... Uh, animation jobs, storyboarding jobs, and a lot of things from Attack on Titan to My Hero Academia to the thing that kind of stood out as maybe why he was picked for this job. He was a key animator on the later seasons of Fully Cooley, which has maybe anime's most famous motorcycle of all time. Hmm. Yeah, I know that um, somebody else who worked on this like, I don't know if it was the manga or if it was um, the director that, that would go on to do uh, another series after this that also came out, that actually came out this year. Um, he did not do that show, but I know a lot of people were uh, comparing these shows together and how this one was better, but I actually want to do it, kind of want to do an episode of that show. But I thought it was the same group of people who did um, a Kebby Sailor uniform. Oh, no, that that was uh, Cloverworks in A1, right? Yeah, I realize now that was Cloverworks, and it has a female director, not a male director. Um, yeah. Whoopsie. But a lot of people <laughs> that compared them and their vibes. Um, for me, the one thing I, I honestly want to compliment this dub for, and it really shows that how how good of an ADR, to, an ADR engineer that Jeff is, is the sound mixing on this show is fucking immaculate. I, was, I, I listened to a little bit of this at work with actual headphones at one point, and I was like, oh, this is, the placement on this is excellent. Ooh, this is, this is really yeah. fun. Hmm? Yeah, because, like, the sound of, like, a wrench dropping is, like, you feel that in your body. Or, like, the sound of the motorcycle against um against the road or, or this is a girl you... this is a girl who's opening up her motorcycle by te by like undoing the bolts so she could change the oil yeah and she's like kicking it or um i really want to compliment this for episode 1 because i've had a couple uh somebody say that episode 1 in itself could have been just like an ova or a, a short film and you could have been done with that and it would have been spectacular just how much has to be conveyed with just sound and music and, and stuff. And if any of that was lost in the mix over to English, it would have made that episode fall flat. So having an ADR engineer who is so good at what they do bring it into this makes a world of difference. And I also think that one of the things I also appreciate is that for the most part, a lot of the voice uh, dialogue in this is very natural sounding. It's it's not over the top. It's not trying to punch anything up. Because this is the last show that would need anything punched up in it dialogue wise. Obviously there are moments where characters get louder because that's their personality. But it never feels like the girls have the same personality or very similar voice register. Or a very similar way of speaking. Like... Koguma is a, word, a character of very few words, and she's very blunt and very simple. She is a lot more high-pitched and a lot more cutesy and stuff. And Reiko is the more mature yet wild. She sounds more mature, but she's the more childish of the three because she easily gets distracted. And I think a lot of the comedy in, in the little comedic moments there, like when Reiko is like, Oh, but when I see a, a an a aerosoft gun on the shelf, and it's like, I don't need to be in this display. <laughs> that took like, a sharp turn. It's kind of like, <laughs> are we shifting gears a little bit here into a, a very different hobby altogether? Reiko is just the is just the uh, stand-in for the Kino's Journey writer. Um, <laughs> you know, you might be wrong. onto something. There. <laughs> no. Motorbikes and guns. That that is a that is a complete circle of his interest for sure. The Kano's journey rider is like, okay, so I'm sorry to tangent this about that. Uh, is everybody aware of my favorite uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure meme? I am not. 
Okay, God. I'm going to send it to the group. Um, but essentially what it boils down to is it is uh uh, it is from part four, and it is uh, the first time that Okuyasu comes over to pick up Josuke for school. And uh, Okuyasu, like, goes into the house. Oh, and God. He, he see, <laughs> and, he see, and he sees Josuke's mom, and he just goes... Uh, wow, your mom's pretty hot. Totally hot. And then, if you've ever seen The Lion King 2, he lives and he <laughs> starts playing, and Kakuin just pops up in the- um, Kakuin's face just pops up, and it just plays Kakuin, like, lo like lusting over uh, Jotaro's mom, but at the very end, he, like, phases in into the sky, looking <laughs> over Okuyasu. That's just, as Reiko's talking about the guns, it's just a picture of the Kino's journey off with a thumbs up. <laughs> just, like, fading into the thing. Is that where your fucking point was going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was its own Kino's journey. GG, Megan. <laughs> At least it's an appropriate Kino's journey. Um, so, like, I just, I just really, like, this show, and I really like a lot of what was done on this um, from a ADR standpoint, especially in the sound mixing, which is, as we all know, the most underlooked aspect of English dubbing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's, um, it's basically the invisible element where it's like, if nobody it's basically if nobody is saying anything about it sounding off, then that means it's good. It's like the, it, the invisible, underappreciated <laughs> element where it's like, if this sounds good and just sounds right, nobody is going to notice it, and that means it's good. And in this show, it is especially good. But if it's off, everybody is going to complain about it, and you will never hear the fucking end of it. You know, nope. you know the types, yeah. You know, just like people who uh, are mad about slang being in dubs. Um Anyway, uh, do you guys have anything else to say about the writing or directing? I wanted to at least compliment and say that there's not a lot I could really say on the dialogue and script itself, but it does sound natural, and I think it does a great job conveying all three of our titular bike girls per particularly well and makes them all distinct and stand out. I just wanted to highlight my particular favorite line in that it, it made me laugh so hard and established Ko Koguma as a character perfectly when it's the bike guy explaining this Super Cup is cheap because there have been three deaths responsible around this bike. And it's just like three deaths are involved in regards to this bike and Koguma just looks at him and goes, wait, that's all? <laughs> yeah. Which is such a... Such a funny way of doing that, because it's like, in any other show, the fact that several people have died because of this bike would be a big plot point, or she would be a lot more turned off or interested of, why did the people die on this bike? She's just like, oh, really? Or, sh or she'd be like, oh, no, it's haunted, and now I'm haunted! The bike's haunted, and... And it's gonna kill her, and then it's gonna kill me. Oh my god! And it's like, and so <laughs> just, just the fucking funny reaction and delivery. But just writing the fact that this girl's just like, wait, that's all. Just perfect, perfect. In no notes. Seven, seven days. This this super cup is gonna turn into a, like, it's gonna de transform out of its its car form into like a stinta transformer and kill Koguma. And then it'll go, it was me! Starscream! Oh, God. I will let you live if you help me become the leader of the Decepticons, he God. will say to a small child. Then you find out Reiko is, is, a, is a driving optimist. Oops. <laughs> hate when that happens. Yeah, but go the good news is, is that uh, they will not be below enemy scrotum. Mm-hmm. We can only hope. <laughs> Michael Bay, get out of here. Um. Uh. So, are you guys ready to move on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, 
There are three total characters who matter to this to this show. You're kidding. I am not. You're lying. I there are other characters who obviously exist and like play a part in the show, but they are not the three central characters that a majority of the time is spent on. Excuse me. Uh, so let's talk about them. They are uh, she, uh, Anaza- uh, Anawa, Reiko, and Koguma. She uh, she is a quiet classmate that uh, ends up uh, kind of coming in around episode seven of the show, where uh, she wants to run a Italian uh, cafe and bar and. She ends up needing to be saved by Koguma and Reiko because the teacher can't go get the espresso machine. Why are we giving high schoolers espresso? I don't know. Because it's a cruel, cruel world. Let's let's put some lattes. Fair. Um, She also has a habit of spiking the drinks with brandy. It's to which the the, the subtitles on this show remind you. Like, caution if you don't do this. Makes it alcoholic and actionable. I love that word, actionable. (laughs) I.e. do not drink and drive, kids. Please do not, like, real talk, though. Please do not drink and dive. Drive, ever. Don't drink and dive. Don't drink and drive. And drive. And don't, and don't drive with two pass- uh, two people on the same motorbike. That's also apparently illegal. No, it's the same bicycle, not motorbike. That, too. But you can carry them in your basket. <laughs> Settle down there, Junji Ito Super Cub. Um... Oh god, imagine that. See, if that's the case, then I'm pretty sure in episode 10 she would be missing, like, half of her face. Uh, anyway. Uh, but she's- you find out that she's family, owns a bakery named, uh, I cannot pronounce- It's the French word for butter, I think? It's like, Mm -hmm. burr. That's pretty much it. Yeah, burr, which is French for butter. Gigi can come yell at my French cop my French in the in the background. And she has a regular bike that's an Alex Moulton bike that she eventually, uh, she ends up slipping on some ice and taking a, like, two-foot fall into a river that is, like, three inches deep. Um, but it is the closest we have to <laughs> snakes in the entirety of the show. Um, and in the end, uh, after they go on kind of, like, the big penultimate, the big ultimate journey, she ends up buying her own little cub. It's very cute. Because, it's small because and she it's her is, color. Yeah, because she is small. Small. She could fit in the back of their was it storage box that they buy? She can she can fit in a fucking basket <laughs> and weighs less than newspapers. No, she weighs less she weighs less than the motorbike. Yeah. Which is like, in itself impressive. And also terrifying because her family is clearly like owning a bakery. Why whatever. Uh then we have Reiko. Reiko is um, this kind of larger, larger than life, mature girl at f- like this, like the pretty looking mature girl who is a total bike otaku. Um, and she kind of becomes Koguma's first best friend, and she originally has a restored MD ninety postal cub that she tries to climb Mount Fuji with, and. Uh, we essentially get the closest that we can to uh, Super Cubs of Anarchy with her. Um, <laughs> it was like a shonen training arc in regards to trying to get that thing up the mountain. It was actually pretty wild. And then complete, she with the, she... complete with a rock montage, I'd like to appreciate. Yeah, push it to the limit. Uh, she And then eventually breaks her MD-90 and gets a CT-110 Hunter Cub. That's red, and she's kind of like the the more childish yet mature looking one. And then there's our uh, super cub owner herself, Koguma, a girl who has no friends, no nothing. She's just like the most average high school girl that you've ever met. And then she buys her super cub to uh, get to school and she like... Her smile and optimism has returneth. Yes, and she she kind of becomes her own person and takes every day uh, just in small things. She's kind of very blunt... Um, and she rides the, the Honda Super Cub, and you kind of see her learning how to take care of it and stuff. So playing she is Skylar Davenport, playing Reiko is Don Bennett, and playing Koguma is Jackie Lastra. 
Skylar Davenport, you've heard as such characters as Azaza Aizawa in I've Been Killing Slimes for over 300 years and maxed out my level. Uh, unfortunately, uh, giving trauma to Amon as she was Karen Jin- uh, Jinro in Show Me Sample. Sorry, she, Amon. Jesus Christ. I don't remember that show anymore. It was not interesting enough to stay in my brain. <laughs> Congratulations, you have pushed it out for, for better better things. You have suppressed it. That is good? I don't know. Don't worry. Don't Su- worry. Suppre- I'm... Suppress suggests it's still there. I, I... There's a bit where a woman barked. I don't even remember much about this show. Anyways, that's all. Don't worry. Time. Don't worry. I'm going to give Noah psychological damage in a second. Yay. Exactly. You're in two seconds, this. anyway. And uh, she's also Eiko in Welcome to Demon School Irma-kun. Ah, uh, the disaster bisexual trying her best. Uh, Dawn Bennett, I think a lot of us are super familiar with from a lot of her work. But she's she been is. characters such as uh, Riri Mikami in a Kebby Siller uniform, Ayano Usami in Asteroid in Love, and just to personally hurt Noah, she is Chiaki Yo- Yokoshi in First Love Monster. Uh, I knew you were going there. It's like, mm, speaking of trauma that's been repressed. All the... Oh, wait, no. There it is again. It's back again. You, ah! you had all the choices in the world and you went with first love monster just to hurt Noah. That's impressive. Every time, man. Every time. It's okay, though. I, I can live it with that. Because... that it means it, that it's... It, don't worry. Noah can, like, remind me of things that have traumatized me. Like, Monster Musume. Uh, I and... wouldn't do that to you. Not, not today, at least. I'll wait till you least expect it. I probably would. <laughs> Thanks, guys. No, I'm on, this is why you're, I'm, on, cool. I'm on, this is why you're getting, that's why you're getting the bonus. See? Oh, dear. <sighs> no, I'm on, uh, like, to, to tell you how much of a bro I'm on is, I'm on waited through online technical hell to get me a video game, and for that he has my immense respect. Good man. Uh, and playing Koguma is Jackie Lastro. Jackie Lastro, you'll know his characters such as Ota Kagone in Dropout Idol Fruit Tart, uh, Peepo in The Wonderland, and uh, I think her most famous role to a lot of anime fans is the black-haired girl in The Night is Short Walk-On Girl, which is a fantastic movie, and I really hope it's not off HBO Max, because that was the only place where the dub was. See, at this, at this point, I think if there's one thing I know Jackie for, it is a role that is literally the exact opposite color palette to Koguma, which is oh. Iris Sagan in I, the Somnium Files. Oh. <laughs> uh, I should have known it was going to come back to I. It always comes back to I. There's like a million puns in that. I see where you're going. <laughs> so yeah i think that oh man she was such a weird addition to the show but i don't think it was an unwelcomed one no um it, 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 I mean, it felt necessary to expand the cast beyond just the two individuals to i guess to show that the the um the compassionship of the motorbike club needed uh, could not be contained to just two individuals. Um, and to be fair, she doesn't just show up uh, at the midpoint. She is kind of scattered throughout the show throughout. I think it's in episode two or three where uh, she actually asks Reiko, hey, would you like to have lunch today? And Reiko says, sorry, I made plans with my friends, only to surprise Koguma and say, hey, oh, yeah, I made plans. because Let's she go knew, have lunch. She, she knew Reiko from beforehand because Reiko always comes to the cafe for bread. Yeah, so I, I like that she was um, that was established throughout uh, before she started becoming more prominent to the rest of the uh, the actual plot of the show. Okay. The plot in big quotation marks. Okay, I, I know there's important things to discuss, like characterization and the dub performances, but what the fuck was that cafe, dudes? <laughs> oh, so when two people love each other very much and want to start a business... And have completely non-complimentary aesthetical design interests. You get that cafe. <laughs> you see, very simple. You, you see, see, when a, when a, when a got German got a, baker, got a, yeah, got a, a little, German got a little baker. America, you got a little Germany, you got a little Italy right there in the middle. And a little, you got a little and America, a, my Germany. A, you get Germany, my America. God, it, it's. I kind of adore how ta- I went from being like, "What the fuck is this travesty?" to <laughs> It's kind of adorable how tacky this is. What the fuck is this? 
See, no, this is what happens when two people cannot decide on what they want. So they go to the Happy Home Designer DLC in Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons. <laughs> oh, that's what you were referencing in the chat. Yes. I, that is some Animal Crossing ass level home. I want 50% of my home to be exactly like a German bakery and 50% of it to be exactly like a 60s Americana diner. I got you, fam. Don't worry. I want 50% of this to be able to house Oktoberfest, and the other 50% of it has to be Johnny Rockets. And, and then, their daughter looked at that and decided, I, I reject both of those and accept my own reality. Let's go it, to Italian Restaurant is she's favorite episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> and then she decided nobody out pizzas the hut. Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> I like Skylar. I think she is very charming and adorable. I, I, I could definitely see why she could be a contentious addition to the show, because of these three, she is the most capital A anime character. She is very cute. She is very meek. She is very high-pitched. And she she basically is the daughter of this biker lesbian couple. That is effectively what her role in this on-the-road biker lesbian family ends up being. She is the Kana to their uh, Kobayashi's Dragon Maid? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, you kind of nailed it. Okay. But I think Skylar's got this very fun, like, quirk quirkiness to her, but she's very charming and passionate about the things she likes, and I do love seeing her play off of these two very different personas, because you basically have the otaku, and then the quiet weirdo, and she compliments and plays off of both of them, and it's kind of a ton of fun. You get to see her, her go on the road trip. And it's actually pretty fun to see her hang out with her friends on the road with these, which, what is basically like her first road trip with these people who are like, yeah, I've driven halfway across the country before on a Tuesday <laughs> afternoon. What of it? Those are some trusting parents, by the way, who said, yes, yes, we will allow our high school daughter to go on a, a, a yeah, a road trip, not in a car, not by a adult, but two other friends. On motorbikes. That that sounds safe. You saved like, her life. Have a free year of bread and coffee, and also you can take her. It's all good. I, we give you her hand entirely. Oh God, to, to be fair, Japan's not that big. Across the country is not like... It's not like us where, like, going across Texas is going to take you at least three days. Yeah, uh -huh. like, like, Japan... Like, I... For as much as it seems like she's going far, I think, like, realistically, she's going, like, a few hours, like... Well, no, it takes them a couple days, because, um, they have to stay overnight at hotels and stuff. No, 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 yeah. sorry, that one takes longer. I'm thinking of, like, the one to her road trip, where it's like, oh. I, don't, I don't think this is dramatically longer than when I drive out to, like, western Massachusetts. Fair enough. That's or, true. Or, or, like, me going up to, uh, Steph's family in Maine, yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, and, I can't say be that like because the, Florida the nicer time of the year too. Florida is wide and long, and there are scary things in the middle of the state that I don't like to talk about. That's fair. And I don't mean the mouse. The mouse is safety, actually. The mouse oh, is the guy you go to for Hitman to protect you against the dangerous things in the Florida ravines. No, no, no. I mean, like, as in they have their own fire department and police thing, and I actually trust them to be a little less corrupt. Um, that's true. Fascinating. Um, okay. So on the, I do want to ask you guys about um, with Skylar's performance. So she's the one who gets to be the most distressed in episode eleven uh, because she she essentially she's recovering from the accident she just had and she kind of breaks down and asks for winter to be taken away. Um, so that part I didn't quite buy the uh, the the distress in that moment because the whole rest of the show had dialogue that was more subdued. People were excited, but no one was in trouble at all. And if they had an issue, they could I easily get it resolved. Feel so like I feel like the issue I had with that 
was that I think out of all of the girls, she has the least natural voice. I think that's fair. It's true, yes. I, I, I think she's fun, but I, I could also believe the uh, criticism that she clashes with the tone of the show. She, she She's definitely the most, like, stereotypical, like, cutesy, moey moey girl sounding. Yeah. Of them. Which, I don't think is terrible, but it does it does sound a little odd next to... Koga and Reiko. Yeah, both, both of whom I think sound much more like actual, like, teenagers you would run into in the wild. It's, it's one of those things where it's <laughs> like, if you enjoy everything else about the aesthetic, but you really don't enjoy yourself, your cute anime girls all that much, and you don't like your maoi stuff for breakfast, then you might be like, ugh, that, that taste kind of clashes. I don't like the sweet marshmallows and all that. Whereas for me, I'm like, I will eat that moe shit for breakfast injected into my <laughs> motherfucking veins like heroin. And I think that, I don't think that Skylar, like, I actually really like Skylar's performance. I just found it a very kind of, like, weird direction to take. But the thing is that I think it also works at, for the most part, getting the pathos that you want out of She's character. And I think especially, I do actually really like the speech that she says, though, where after she's, she's, you know, like, gone into the little, like, she's fallen into the river and she's just really depressed about winter because all these bad things keep happening because she she was finally like really kind of like i had a friend group i have my own bike blah blah blah, blah. like and then that kind of all gets taken away from her and all she really wants is koguma to to kind of make her escape like how koguma is has see she kind of i think thinks that koguma is trying to escape on her bike of the daily old drums when it's more like I'm living with my bike and my bike is just a part of things and stuff. So but the whole po- and the, the she doesn't seem to understand that the the whole bike situation is not to escape, it is used to help adapt because throughout the whole show they're always buying new accessories for their bike that can help them adapt to the changing weather as the season goes on or just like the changing needs like how Koguma has to learn what goggles are. Um. <laughs> and you you're, you were like, how do you not know what goggles are? And it's like, Megan, it's clearly obvious she didn't know, because in this universe, goggles is a popular search engine. I can understand yeah, why she would clearly. get confused. Fair. Yes. But I think the thing that really um, sells me on, on Skylar as, as she is in that last episode where she gets her own little cub and they're kind of talking and she's just completely ignoring them. And you just hear those <laughs> little, like, mm, in her voice. I, I think I just love the fact that it's like, I wanted to ask you guys for advice, but I was too excited and I just bought it. Like that, <laughs> that almost like giddiness of buying that cool thing you've really been like saving up for. It's like, I, I wanted to wait for the surprise, but I wanted to tell you, but I want to surprise you first. It's like, it was very cute. Mm-hmm. And I think I did enjoy Skylar. Also, just because we're not going to talk about them, I wanted to quickly shout out her parents, uh, Dora Fine and Chris George, which, for what is basically an almost predominantly California-based cast, it was very fun and surprising to see a recurring character that is just Chris George. And he's great, and so is her mom, who is... What Talking is... with a southern accent. Was she American? Is that what her deal was? No, I think she I was just a so. Japanese weeaboo. Oh, yeah. she was a Westaboo? Yeah, she's a, a, a weeaboo in reverse. So uh, a Westaboo. A oh my god, America. I didn't even realize. A Texaboo? A Texaboo? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Is that what you call a King of a Hill fan? A Texaboo? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Do you think that there are like weeaboos for every st- like weebs for every state in the United States? Like Jesus th- Christ! There's a Massachusetts boo, a Florida boo. We know oh, who absolutely. that is. His name a, is do, Amnon Duel. Do they have a competition to see who can do the best job of pronouncing Massachusetts correctly? <laughs> okay, so you guys joke about this, but so I was browsing TikTok. And I'm sorry to distract about this because this is about another U.S. state. So apparently, the, the Minnesota well. Vi- this, apparently the Minnesota Vikings, I guess, are playing in London this week. 
So their TikTok was going around to British people and asking them to pronounce cities in Minnesota. That's pretty good. I mean, what else are you going to do while you're over there? How do you say Bahaba? <laughs> I guarantee you there are nerds for every state around the country. 100%. I could, I could be mean and say all states except Ohio, but I'm sure there's at least one. Well, there's got to be some Sandusky fans out there somewhere. Okay, we are we have, we are moving what? this away immediately. What? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't Jesus, get it. Jesus Christ, Noah. Noah, are you, what the fuck are you talking about? I'll, I'll oh. explain when you're older. Oh, is that about Cedar Point? Yeah, well, yeah. Check the course. chat. No, no, that's not what I was talking about. Oh, that's not? No, no. <laughs> Andrew, Sandusky that's is... Pennsylvania, not Ohio, you dumbass! What the hell were you on? No, Sandusky is where all the best the- is where the only theme parks in Ohio are. No, there's not. There's one in Cincinnati. Shut up. No, th- that doesn't count. Kings, I- Kings Island counts! Uh, uh mm. Can we Kings Island? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, well, Andrew for... will explain when you're older. Uh, yeah, Alban, I... how do you feel about a lot of this? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I, I quite think that. Uh... You're just having. No, I'm. It, it, I was like, is your brain reformatting? Because Andrew took that the wrong way too. Yeah, I took it the wrong way. <laughs> oh, no! oh. What's wrong with you? See, these uh, people haven't been on a real roller coaster. That's the problem. We were talking about... Like, okay, I, I, okay, in my defense, in my defense, you were talking about college football not even two minutes ago, and you just dropped the phrase we Sandusky. Can you I, fucking I, I, blame me? In, in my in my defense, you know, while I'm a big fan of Defunct Land, at the end of the day, the, the theme parks I know are the ones in <laughs> eastern massachusetts and southern new hampshire i can be like park and that one six flags we have up here i don't go to I, i'm I not, not I... familiar with the ohio ones i didn't uh, know they had theme parks on the east coast shut up it shut up man i was gonna say i think i actually want to go to canopy lake park because there's a roller coaster there i want to ride the big wooden one uh is that i believe that is i'm just trying to remember what it's called like the cannonball or something uh i think it's that it's like um you you just said big wooden roller coaster that's already an appeal right there oh it's great lovely uh yeah oh it is yankee cannonball yeah that's a good one i have to directly compare it to shivering timbers which is the big one at michigan adventures yeah there's it's not the one that i'm thinking of but it is another new hampshire um it is another new hampshire um roller coaster that's why Speaking of going for a ride, it's a. It's a <laughs> by the way, the answer is it's at Lake Compounds. That's why. I don't Anyways, know that is. anyway, yeah, like Noah said about writing things. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, I, I, I like these performances a lot. Um, I think Skylar being like a little more anime girl sounding um, than I might have like suggested if I, you know, in the. In Random suggestion that they had me direct this for some completely unfathomable reason. Um, don't do it, Funimation. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, like, I actually agree. Like, she get like, you know, her pitch is a little odd compared to the rest of the show, but her actual performance, I think, is very, very good. Um, there's something I think is true kind of across the board with both, like, these three and the, like, endless waves of unnamed side characters that populate the show. <laughs> Yeah right. <laughs> they're all they're all just they're all they're all purely functional. Uh, they're there they're there to do things like yeah. parents or something. Like we are talking about almost every named character in the show right now. Everybody else mm-hmm. has a title or a job. It, it, it's almost appropriate. There's a cast member from the nice short walk on girl in here. Another another piece of media <laughs> that's really into giving people titles, not names, but not names. Black hair girl, girl and senpai. Senpai, senpai. the romance and, uh, of the ages. Oh, Did, and uh, was there ever like I don't know if this was um exp- like explained anywhere about like how. Crunchyroll decides what they're going to dub, but it honestly did feel like the fact that there is such a small cast list and it's a single core show uh, helped justify, you know, dubbing as opposed well, to like, maybe a more Well, here's the thing. I think this show. was actually like 
This is actually, I think, one of the last stuff with, like, the actual Funimation logo on it. Yeah, this came out in May. Uh, May- so, this is, like, so, like, uh, here's the thing. Okay. For the most part, Funimation, back when, you know, they weren't, like, Ratatouille popular, like, controlling Hime, um, <laughs> they actually would go back and, like, just, you know, backlogged up a lot of their stuff. So, it was less, a, it was more of, it wasn't, like, a, is this going to get dubbed? It was more of an eventually, okay, when is this? So, there's that. Like, apparently, like, allegedly there exists a dub for Pride of Orange, which I'm going to drag at least three other of you into. Uh, because we were going to talk about the one hockey anime that exists. Speaking of characters, I, I think Reiko, like, I think Dawn actually steals the show as Reiko. Oh, yeah. I can't disagree there. She is just full of so much, like... I actually, I actually had a hard time believing that was Dawn. Dawn oh, no. is no. an extremely versatile actress as we have all got into pretty much it's all in the time we've been doing this you can kind of see like we have literally been following a lot of professional careers as they basically budded and started out in anime to now Mm -hmm. like being like in like big video games and like humongous ips like don bennett is the lead purple girl in a fire emblem spin-off game i mean like the thing is that for some reason that this character like reiko in the way that dawn performed reiko gave me like some some like old school caitlin glass vibes was that the scene where she was uh cursing at god for crashing on the mountain in episode five kind of you know, I can kind of hear it actually now that you mention it. She's got a little was... she's got a little bit of that Winry gearhead energy going for her. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was, yeah, that's a good that's a good comparison. The, the very passionate about the mm-hmm. thing that you would not expect a high school girl to be passionate about. She's which I do also appreciate in the show that they they never play up that it's like a joke that uh, girls would be into mechanics or motorcycles of any kind. Yes. Like the show could have entirely been gender flipped and neither the plot nor the humor would have changed at all. So, like, this is a show that kind of exists in the world of, like, they are not in bustling metropolis Tokyo area. This is... Yeah, they even... I feel she's like... dad even makes a comment. Uh, I'm sorry. I was yeah. She's dad makes a comment that he intentionally left Tokyo to come to a quieter, sleepier town like this one. Yeah. Well... Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think it's a coincidence that this takes place in like the sticks of Japan. Like mm-hmm. this is very much. I feel like one of the most integral things to the show is that when you are living nowhere, you feel trapped and aimless. So even getting something like a cub, like a motorcycle effectively increases your world just because you have the energy and the time to go a different direction than you would some other day than before. And it, like, opens their world, opens their worldview, and all that. And I think that's very integral to the just the little things energy the show's going for. Anyways, the reason I bring that up is because this bitch just lives in a log cabin. (laughs) Like, all by herself. That's big enough. That the, the base is big enough. You can roll your motorcycle into it. She is just... She is just, like, the poster girl for what is basically small-town, rural-sticks, Japan gearheads. Which is a small crowd, but I guarantee you they are hooting and hollering at this representation. And you know what? Mm? Noah actually brought up a, a fantastic point that I wasn't even thinking about for this show is how how much is this just good representation for just like female characters because like they're the only time they ever got like any sexual or sexualized is I could have done without the couple of times of Reiko trying to like but come on curry is best eaten in the nude. See, like, yeah, that was like the one thing, and I kind of enjoyed the weird nonchalance of it, of like, co- about like Koga, Koga just being like, 
put your fucking clothes on. Clothes back on and it, just it like was not even, it wasn't away. even surprise. It was like, oh, you've shown me your boobs too many times before. Put it on. We have guests. Put, put not on, not just put on your clothes. Put on your your writing outfit because it's meant to be stained. Yeah. <laughs> That's how casual they are with each other at this point. Which in itself sounds like a double entendre now that you think about it. Um, uh, Andrew! <laughs> yeah. <sighs> See, I, what I really, I really like about, um, and I forget who mentioned this earlier, is that the direction and the writing makes all three of the characters sound distinct from each Me. other. Not just for, yeah, it was, it was you, it was you. Me and Andrew uh, kind of both. Yeah, I mean, I think we all agree that uh, mm-hmm. when you have three characters, you really should make them all sound distinct from each other. Yeah, um, there's... There should be a thing of, oh god, I've had to turn my head away for a second. I should be able to tell who's talking. Yeah, yeah. And what Re- what Dawn does with Reiko is uh, she makes her really didactic. Like, her delivery is really, like, emphasizes the syllables more than the other two. But also, this is part I really love, is that her pitch goes up and down with her mood. It's not a steady stream, or it's not a consistent pitch from line to line. She's, like, modulating all over the place to kind of convey that that kooky, wacky persona that she's got. And I, I like that because it sounds natural. It's like she could carry that throughout the whole series without the acting suffering for it. So let's talk about that time Reiko decided to fight God. I kind of <laughs> love how absolutely fucking raw Dawn sounds when she is fighting the actual uphill battle and like that just, level of like grit gritting her teeth in frustration and just going damn it damn it damn it when mm-hmm. like the entirety of the show she's just kind of been like this free-spirited like biker gal and then it's like oh so this is what frustration and like annoyance sounds like before she remembers oh right this is supposed to be fun <laughs> Yeah, where she literally beats up her her body in two ways. Where, like... Because, essentially, the cubs are kind of, like, the extension of the girls at points. Where she keeps throwing... I I think... And God bless Patrick Seitz, uh, base camp man, um, who where he's like, you need to lean with the mountain. Yes. And, And just Dawn's... Like, I think the thing that got for me is just the gritty sounding, the two sides of Reiko. There's the gritty, like, you just need to keep going. just And then you hear, like, that scared little girl of, I don't want to do this, my altitude sickness. Like, like that. And also, shout out to the soundtrack that went from, like, Claire de Lune to fucking Motley Crue, as Noah put it. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it was shockingly raw stuff, but I dug a hell out of it. Uh, shout yeah, out to I, shout out to ZAQ who worked on this as well as a musician. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. they did the ED. Uh, yes. Oh oh the, the and they also song. okay. Oh no 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 they also worked on the soundtrack. Really? See, I, okay, that's see, cool. See Andrew yeah. pointed yeah Andrew pointed out in chat that they use a lot of uh, royalty free music which they do like they, they do Claire de Lune they do Jim No Petty they do quite a few classical tracks in like the you know calming driving through the country uh, scenes. But, yeah, there's a whole lot of what sounds like original tracks in here, too. There's, like, a jazzy cocktail number. There's that mm-hmm. rock bit where Reiko's trying to climb the mountain. There's a so, song yeah. that drives me crazy because it sounds and starts exactly like Dongo Daisaku. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, no, it's a different fucking song. God damn it. That'd you be tri- a, that'd You've be tricked fuck- me. Yeah, where Maybe was it. that? Because I remember you mentioned it, but I, I missed and missed that when I was watching the show. I can't tell you where. It came up a few times, but there's parts where it literally sounds like the start of the piano. Da, 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 da. And then it kind of just becomes a more, like, laid back and, like, fun beat. I'm like, oh, that's not, yeah. that's not Dongo. Anyway, not, sorry. We, we don't have Kiyoani money. I was going to say, watch out. This is going to be a very different show if this was, uh... A uh, key, key, uh, June Maeda presents Super Cub. Oh, lordy. Um, the cub would be like the reincarnation of her dead parents. <laughs> uh, or some shit like that. Uh, yeah, why but, don't we have, why don't we have a, a voice credit for the cubs in this, uh, in this discussion? They were voiced by the actual motorcyclers themselves. But, uh, I, I really, I think Reiko ended up being my favorite performance in the show just because of Dawn's energy and exuberance for this. Um. Yeah, she's fantastic. Like, 
no notes. Just, she's fucking great. I think this is also, I'm really sad that this is a performance that might get lost on the year too, because it's not like in, it, I'll get to it in final thoughts, but it, yeah. Uh, Alon, how do you feel? She's great. Um, <laughs> the most, heart, most heartbreaking moment in this show is in the mountain. It's the bit at the, towards the end of the mountain episode where she falls off like the ridge. And you yeah. watch her roll down, and she's okay. But it's like, is the bike okay? <laughs> yeah, right? And you look over, and it's like, oh, it's fucking tra- Oh, God, it's trash. Like, that that hurt so much. Uh, it's, like, a test, like, it, it's a test... It's a real testament to how much the show makes you care about, like, this this vehicle. <laughs> it, is, this, is this what initial D fans feel all the time? <laughs> Probably. Is this, what, is, this, is this what is this why they're so into that? Is this how they feel? Because I get it now. I get it. It's like, like it's watch, like that one thing from a... It's All Always Sunny of fucking uh, Danny DeVito. Oh my god, I get it. Exactly. I like I just her her. I mean her performance in that episode. I think we've established it's it's wonderful. But like her like her. Her like and her in that episode, and then in the like in the following episode where she talks to Koguma talking about like yeah, I like I just really I obliterated my bike trying to do this, and it's like it's so, it's so understated, and there's always that feeling of like you know it's it's a bike, it can be repaired, it can be fixed, but it hurts to see my bike hurt like this. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's body, and, but not its soul. And like and you know for for as many times as you know I, there there are certain episodes where they talk about you know I can go anywhere as long as I have my cub and it can come off as like a little cheesy in a, in a way I find endearing but a little cheesy and mm-hmm. then you see that and it's like nah nah like I fucking get it yeah it, yeah mm-hmm. it feels yeah. like the equivalent of like somebody having like a big sports career and then they just got benched for three months because of an injury I it it. it rem- it reminds me of any show I've ever seen where a plot point is that someone's beloved instrument gets damaged. Oh no! Which it's like, which, oh yeah. And I'm, you know, I, I've, I haven't actually played in years, but I at least was a guitarist for a, for a good chunk of my teen and college years. So like, I understand that, and so if I can make that emotional connection to a character feeling about an object, like it, it, no further explanation needed. I completely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, and she fucking sells it in that in that episode. Like, it's good. There's definitely there feels like a connection between this show and another show that we've covered in the past about a nobody high school student becoming super passionate about something, Beck Mongolian Chop Squad, because that's uh, another show. You know, I that's was I show. was thinking of Beck because that was the other episode where we were talking about this exact thing of oh this is what an actual slice of life anime is much like that's Super right. Cub. I wasn't exactly. there. <laughs> <laughs> And just like that, show, I don't think that show was sponsored by uh, you know a music company either. Just like I don't think this one was sponsored by Honda. But damn it, if you don't want to go out and buy a motorcycle or a guitar at the end of watching it. So you joke, but I was actually browsing how for how much a super cup costs <laughs> while watching this. I was too. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't need one. I would have nowhere to put it. It's not something I would get. But yeah, I'm like, like <laughs> how much? I'm like, would I don't it live put in a. Me back? I'm like I'm also at the place. Where I'm like I don't know where in the state I would drive this because I don't want to be on a motorcycle on the Florida roads. Like fair mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. Like, and then there's Jackie as Koguma, who, you know, for oh, being boy. the main the main character doesn't doesn't talk a ton, but like when she does, Jackie is very on point for all of her performance. And and uh, this is the last curse thing I'm going to say in this whole recording. Hit us. Um, what? Hit us. Okay, so there's this one part where, and I really love Jackie in, in Skylar's delivery of this, where they're, like, teasing her about wanting to ride on the cub. And and she goes, maybe I could ride it. She goes, I, and then Jackie's just kind of, like, Koguma has a very blunt way of speaking. Yeah, and, and especially she go, in the second and, half. Yeah, and she goes, she's like, I don't know, the cub can sense that, that uh, you can... The, the cub can sense if you're nervous and it'll throw you off. Like, that type of thing. Like, <laughs> as if the uh, cub is alive. <laughs> and Andrew just goes in the chat, Koguma, awesome. sweetie, it's not a horse. <laughs> and I was they're, like, they're are you sure thing. about that? Because, you know, Reiko got thrown off a mountain on her cub. 
So, uh, this is my curse theory, a la, you know, like, the people who are like, Oh, and the entire time, the Rugrats, it's Angelica's coma dream, and about her, like, aborted baby brother, and, blah, 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 like, that shit, right? The Pokemon universe exists in Ash's mind yeah, while he's, he's in a coma, he's yeah. In coma. Ed and Eddie's so, in purgatory, etc. There, there are no actual people in this universe, it's just these three girls and no, everybody else is a delusion. No, no, and, and this is my, my, my crack theory about the Super Cubs. Um... So in this universe, the the super cubs are actually sentient. Uh, their souls are that of bears that they you know went out in the woods and the great Honda shamans like separated bear cubs from their mothers and sucked their souls out, leaving taking away the bears like human super intellect and like ability to sense things and like put them in the body of the cub motorcycles. And that's why the cubs can throw them off. And without their souls, the bears are like the bears you see in nature. But if they had their souls, they'd be like the bears you see in Polar Bear Cafe. Dude, I fucking love this Brother Bear reboot. Holy shit. <laughs> so so, so right. this is this is the spiritual successful to that 80s cartoon where a kid could turn into a car, right? Sure. I need a direct connection I, between those two. I, I give your I give your theory a uh, a Marowak is wearing its mother's skull out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's what accurate. it is. That's accurate. That's that, it, Amon, that's just lore accurate. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's why it gets that rating. Oh my god. I don't care. Real, that's real it's really fucked up that that's actual Pokemon lore. I don't fucking that care if it's soul it's literally going to suck my soul out of my body. I want to pet the ghost dog, god damn it. <laughs> I know. I mean, who, who doesn't, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, and, and just as our final acknowledgement of how fucked up the Pokemon universe is, do you know that Drifloom captures okay. children and takes it to hell? I feel like I the remember Drifloom. hearing that. People, yeah, the like, pe- the, the, people, the, the people who write Pokemon flavor text realize that no one actually reads any of this shit. They can just write whatever they want. <laughs> it's Did, beautiful. I, I, I have to send you the Jay Witz videos where he ranks uh, the, the terrifying uh, Pokemon Pokedex entries. Which include things like uh, other Pokemon liquidating other Pokemon's flesh to eat them like a, a milkshake. Love it. So are there any motorcycle Pokemon? Uh, there yes, are actually. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, no, have you seen the new legendaries? No, I haven't. They're motorcycle dragons. We will show you, but they are literally sentient motorcycles. Cycles. Super Cub, I choose you. I'm gonna literally name mine Super Cub now. Perfect. <laughs> I just want to know how this is gonna tie into the reboot, Lone Wolf and Cub. So Jackie. Yeah, there was a dub here. Um, yeah, broken. Jackie's. So, he... so I want to know if you guys uh, can understand my demented logic here. So when I first heard Koguma in the show, I didn't look up the cast list. I just wanted to listen to it blank. And my first thought from her first lines in the episode were, this sounds like a very, very, very chilled out Laura Jill Miller. And I was surprised to find out it actually wasn't. It was an actress who I've not heard before. You got Laura Jill Miller? Because of the delivery of the voice. Like, Laura's got a very, like, distinct way she pronounces her vowels. Um, It's like, I want to call it like a West Coast delivery. And Jackie distinguishes herself from a lot of other like soft-spoken anime girls which there are quite a bit of but the way that she portrays koguma is really um it's like there's a confidence in the way she delivers even the soft-spoken parts of it like she's not self-loathing i think it's the best way to describe it and we see more of that as the show goes on because like megan said she gets very blunt in some of her deliveries she's not you know self-defeating she's She's not super confident, but she is blunt in the way she delivers things. Okay, I, I at least kind of follow you, at least. So it's my, my roundabout way of saying that it was good. It was good and distinct for uh, a voice that I've heard done before, but not quite like this. I think the wildest thing to me about this one is I spent several months going through the entirety of both I the Somnium Files and I the Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. <laughs> the voice I now associate with Jackie is plucky, 
peppy idol girl who's a bit of a, a cult dork weirdo, but also plays video games on the internet and has, like, big gamer girl energy. Mm. This is, like, literally the exact opposite color palette. This is mm -hmm. not bright pinks. This is muted colors and sad food, which... I think my favorite... Amon, you were joking about the fact that, man, this is the most depressing thing I've ever seen is this girl's lunches at the beginning. The food is... Just, it, mm -hmm. is it is... You'll see those clips that go around Twitter of, oh, look at all this great food from, like, Ghibli anime, usually some other crap thrown in there. It's actually Ghibli or whatever. Makoto Shinkai. Exactly. And just, like, this is... This is the spiritual antithesis of this. I never felt so sad <laughs> looking at food like drawn food in my life i want to die i think my favorite <laughs> to character the, to the, arc to the point where um i think like the second episode you get a shot of one of her like you know like pre-made curry meals which is mm -hmm. is also equally pathetic but if memory i if memory i need to check this but i'm pretty sure it is matched by a shot in like episode 10 where she's having curry with reiko oh in the yeah snow. and i'm pretty sure like it's the same shot but in the second one it actually looks appetizing uh, I need to check on that because that's good visual communication in anime. My my favorite character <laughs> development for Koguma as a character is watching her learn how to have food. Learning how to exist. Learning how yeah. to exist, learn how, yeah. Learn how to eat on her motorcycle and not feel awkward about it. It's, or like, uh, I think like one of the times where they eat, like she's literally eating her curry cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't microwave that. Ugh. Because she just didn't want to be a burden it felt like which cold curry can't i mean it still has flavor but it's nowhere near as good when the rice is actually warm but she literally starts making meals that are actually meals and she starts eating food that is real food so it's like i was so excited that she saved their daughter's life and she's like you get free food for a year and i'm like oh thank god this fucking girl needs it <laughs> well she didn't need it at that point because she she bought that bento box remember that she, she self self needed. She's still growing and existing more I than also... the bare essentials. Because she has a cub. Because she has a you cub. You know where That's cubs all. come from? Bears. Uh, one of my, speaking of one of my favorite deliveries in the show, it's uh, Jackie's delivery of, well, I decided that I wanted one. <laughs> I needed one. Because yeah. she, she buys the thing even though she just, like, gave Reiko shit. And God, Jackie's energy of, like, a put-off mom of, Come on, we're here to go shopping. That's not what we came here for. We didn't come here for guns. We came here for, uh, not gloves. Windshields. Like, le yeah, uh, no, it wasn't the windshield. It was like leg protectors or something. No, it was the windshield. They're, they're no, leveling up their gear. Yeah. Yeah. Every episode they're levering up, which, I, I mean, I know that the, it, it's really hard to disconnect the, um, I, I'm showing you how much I love this hobby aspect of the show, which I appreciate. And I, I wish more shows would do that. It's not a show about nothing. It's actually about something concrete. But also with the, and here are all the accessories you can buy. Because it feels very much like a, you know, once you get into this hobby, here are all the things that you're going to want to buy. You're going to want a raincoat. You're going to want gloves. You're going it, to it, want it's presented a lot. It's presented in a lot more natural ways. She's getting them as she learns she needs them and not all at once. Right, actually, that's I, and it, it's healthy, I guess. I actually appreciate that because one of the a thing I found via the Wikipedia page for this was actually a review of the show in Motor Biscuit, which is like a like motorcycle enthusiast website. Yeah, uh, and actually, one of the things is like it's like I, I I only recently got like I don't think they have a Honda Cub, but they have a similar kind of like smallish motorbike, and like this actually reflects a lot of my own experience as someone who's new to this. I I really enjoy this show. It actually feels like it was made by people who. Like actually get this at all, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I felt I feel like that actually that sounds like high praise. They understand the actual niche they're yeah. working in. That that, actually, that feels like a good sign. It is a, it is also good to normalize main, t maintaining your electronics or you know the the nicer things that you have in life because that's not really a lesson we see in any media. Instead of just throw it out and buy a new one, the show actually advocates for learning to change your own oil keeping up with the maintenance, learning how to do everything on your own. Reading the fucking manual. W2, read the manual from start to finish. <laughs> reading and the I manual. Like a... I, 
No, I appreciate, like, I wrote this down, that in the very first episode, uh, she goes to the Mart, and her bike doesn't start up, and she's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and I expected that what was going to happen was there was going to be, you know, someone else, some other bike owner who would stop by, see her problem, and help her out. But that doesn't happen. The writers actually have her read the manual, figure out through trial and error what the problem is, and gets it going her own self. And I was like, that's unique, and I appreciate that. And one of the things I really appreciate about Jackie's voice work integrating into that is they're just, like, little noises that she makes. Like, you know those, like, little hums and, like, little breath noises and stuff that you make Mm -hmm. during the day when you're, like, pleased with yourself or, like, you're a little annoyed? Like, that type of stuff. I'm pretty sure if you, you, like, timed out the number of of, uh, minutes on screen that Jackie has sound you know has voice sounds half of it is dialogue and the other half is like you were saying the voice sounds i have to imagine they had her in the studio for the same amount of time to record those little bits and pieces that went throughout the show and it's it's one of those things that i think like as people talk about dubs that they 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 kind of lose in it because this is this is a show that like I'm, I, I i don't want to segue totally into my final thoughts because i feel like that gets into my final thoughts, and I don't think that everybody's done talking about Jackie's performance. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. But it, I think it's just one of those things that like just needs to be appreciated more. And and the thing I also like about Jackie as as Koguma is that her voice tone never betrays like who Koguma is at at, at heart. Like Koguma isn't a character who isn't going to like. I'm bringing this up as an example because it's a show that's airing this season as of this recording. She's not going to, like, literally phase out into a different animation style a la the girl from Bochi the Rock. Um. Oh, yeah. But, uh, she's, she has her moments and, like, even when she gets a little, like, exacerbated or, like, I think the only time you ever see her, like, genuinely yell is when she gets annoyed at her thermometer for fucking with her. <laughs> about being sick and they it wasn't or, even that upset yeah she and even then or like when she kind of has the the when they're playing in the snow together mm-hmm. is the most expressive you see koguma throughout the whole show and i think that's also when the color palette's at its brightest the whole time i i love the little detail that i know noah pointed out but they're consistent with it throughout in that the show is a muted color palette that briefly brightens up whenever Ko- Koguma is actually happy. Mm-hmm. And I really like that visual detail. I love this I love th- I love this child. I love this like awkward, quiet, weirdo little girl learning she can do more than just exist. She can actually be happy. And I think Jackie's like weirdly muted, distant, but growing and is endearing charming and a great counterbalance to both reiko and she i really love this unique performance because it's different to what i know jackie's other vocal registries for and i think it's really unique and i think it was a fantastic choice for the show i think she is great as this character and i think she nails reiko's final monologue about what what the show was at its heart that it was never about how she only has an amazing life because she has a super cub it was no she has an amazing life because she took the chance on getting the cub and then used that chance to just take a different direction instead of going straight she went right a hundred percent yeah it was about what she she did herself but because she felt emboldened by being in a hobby and honestly, there's a line that, that's pretty great. Yeah, there's a line from, uh, bring it back to Kino's journey, um, about when Kino first rides a bike for the first time, uh, rides Hermes for the first time. Uh, Hermes tells her that uh, there's a pact between us. You give me balance, and I will give you speed. And that feels very much like the relationship uh, with the characters and their bikes in the show. Is that, like, you know, your life could have progressed on, and you could have found other things to be passionate about, sure. But you gave balance to this thing that interested you, and in return, it granted you the speed to progress ahead in your life. 
Yeah. And that's pretty beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and all this can be yours if you've got three thousand dollars to spend. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Fucking Christ! Going back to you know we were saying uh, saying earlier about how this this all feels very naturalistic. Mm -hmm. I, th Jack, I think J Jack, this is a really hard performance to do well. I feel like uh, you know as, as Noah was saying, like I feel like a lot of, a lot of her vocalizing is just like, mm. um, and I feel like she's good at doing that like in character. If that makes any sense? Yeah. Like uh, it, this feels like one of these. Like, of the three main characters, Reiko feels like, at least by the standards of this show, that's like the relatively flashy vocal performance, and Koguma mm -hmm. feels like the more understated one of the three, the most understated. And I, I am, I am very. Imp I think Jackie did a really good job of being able to capture that, even though like, you know, like Koguma gets good lines, but a lot of them are like, oh, only three people died. Yeah. <laughs> You know, just sort of like, I love you know, like follow oh, the, the beach I won't go by has killed more people than that. <laughs> I love the follow up line too, where he offers her the 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 gloves and the helmet, and she's like, "Did people die with these too?" <laughs> oh, I forgot that part. <laughs> my, no, my... no, though, this is just a, a, a deal. It's it's a promotion. <sighs> Do we learn later how they the how they how the people on the bike died? I'm trying. I like. Yes, yes. And, 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 oh, like, no. and like none of them were actually had anything to do with the bike, right? No, yeah. Reiko explains later on it was um, uh, one guy was uh, a schemy business guy who just walked out of town. One was a priest who just didn't gave up his license. His license is gave his license, and the last one was uh, he had just had a heart was, attack because he was a yeah drunk. yeah he died, but it had nothing to do with the bike, <laughs> which was a very funny twist. It's a great payoff. Um... Yeah, like, and, you know, Jackie, she has good lines to be sure, and I do, I also agree, I think she does that monologue at the end really, really well, and does a good job of making that feel on the, uh, on the, like, it's, you know, earnest, not cheesy, or at least, you know, if, it, if it's cheesy, it's cheesy in a good way. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, this, this, I, this is a tricky role, I feel like, and it'd be a role that would be, not, not even necessarily do badly, but to have it just be okay probably would be pretty easy so I'm, I'm i a lot of kudos to her for i think really nailing this this performance um especially because so much of the show is often her just kind of like semi-silently being like how does this bike work now that i own it <laughs> since i bought it for uh how much did she pay for it what like i think it was like what is it he wanted like a thousand yen it was so, cheap so, whatever so, it was so she, it was cheap it was like no ten thousand yen. Ten thousand. she paid she paid the equivalent of a hundred bucks for it no a thousand no uh what is it well, how much was it was a thousand yen it was a hundred thousand dollars i think no it's a hundred i think it was like ten thousand yen ten thousand that's a no, hundred dollars that'd be about a hundred dollars was it that was it more no no the way the know. way the way the way, the way the way yen, whenever if you're looking at yen, if you want a vague approximation of what that is in U.S. dollars, knock off the last two digits. And that's, I'm gonna look that's, this up. And that's you know vague. Well, that's comparatively what it would be in, in yeah. American dollars. It's not as clean cut as it used to be. I know we've been doing that that metric for a while, but I've been looking at like uh, yen to dollar comparisons mm. recently, and it's honestly it's closer to like a hundred, like a hundred and fifty. Yen is closer to. Or no, I'm sorry. A dollar is closer to like 150 yen. Yeah, I, I forget which one. I, 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 I usually find that's more handy in the context of like you know, they have hockey yen stores, which is like yeah, the hundred yen stores are functionally oh, a yeah. dollar store, and that's that's more like. Here's yeah. how. To, anyways, this is off top. Jackie's yeah. good. That's my point. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. the point I was circling towards. Jackie's good. But I was joking before that it cost three thousand dollars for a cub without checking. Turns out it actually it's. Uh, oh wait, it's did you not look that? Did you not look that up ahead of time? I I legitimately didn't. <laughs> no, it was like about three thousand something dollars. Yep. It is, and but that's MSRP. If you get like a slightly used one, I'm sure it's a lot less. Probably. Not that I'm gonna get one. You know what I was hunting for earlier today? Legitimately, non ironically. Is it a sitting mower. God damn! How'd you know that? <laughs> Things you ride. <laughs> Things you ride. You, you know, uh, you know uh, it's because I was reading up on George Jones and he related a time where he really wanted to go get a drink, but his wife had taken all the car keys, so he rode his fucking riding <laughs> motor to his bar. <laughs> That's oh, why. Uh, so let's George ride our Jones. ass over to our final thoughts. Indeed. 
So this is, this is a good show. This is a good. I don't. I mean, I know a lot of people mark this in like their um, you know underrated the sleeper hit of twenty twenty one, but for pretty good reason. Okay, so the um, answer it, was it was ten thousand yen. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. So a hundred bucks for a life changing motorcycle. That's a good deal. And you know what? Uh, no, this was a good deal. The, yeah, this was a good show. Megan, I'm glad that you picked this one, and I want you to share with the audience what the other show was that you were kind of debating between doing this up. This uh, it was this or on. it was this or Taisho Otome Fairy Tale. Yes, with, with Taisho Otome Fairy Tales looked like another good show, but for like the exact opposite reason than this one is good. The show is laid back, good. I watched the whole thing in 24 hours with no issues. I probably kind of watch it again just to like fall asleep too. And yes, it legitimately makes me interested in possibly hunting for my very own motorbike as well, just because the show did it that well. Thank you, dub actors. Thank you, ADR staff, especially the mixers. This was a nice little gem that I'm so glad we got to cover. This is the kind of show that I can absolutely see. I, I feel like there's always the conversation of being nine people's fit. I like to bring this one up a lot where you can have be nine people's favorite thing or a hundred people's ninth favorite thing. And this is the kind of show that is nine people's favorite thing. This is not the kind of show that I think was ever going to make it to the big leagues because its premise is even more low key ambience than like the typical cute girls doing cute things thing. A lot of like anime otaku viewers already watch. This is just kind of a low-key, muted show about how the little things in life can make us happy even when we're kind of bleak, when it's kind of bleak and empty. And it's kind of charming. It's beautiful. The fact that this is not a paid Honda advertisement, but it's just the product of a guy or an author who's just so endeared to the specificness of the Honda Cub, the Honda <laughs> Super Cub in particular, makes what could have just seemed like a cheap cash-in genuinely dorky in an endearing way. I like these characters. I like the vibe. This is a good time, and this is a show you could actually fall asleep to and just vibe. And I dig that. Good job to yep. everybody involved. But Reiko didn't want to make her, her motorcycle uh, dorky, remember? She, she resisted <laughs> getting the uh, windshield for the longest time. Or the leg shields. Or the leg shields. Well, guess what? She's a dork by her very nature, whether she realizes it or not. That's what I love about it. Is like she's so concerned about looking cool. It's like, do you know what your hobby is? I was going to say, she's the, she's the Grandpa Simpsons. One day it'll be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tracks. Amon? Uh, before we get into my uh, final thoughts, uh, I wanted to share two bits of trivia that I read up on this. Oh, yeah? Uh, okay, sure. Appar well, apparently, a couple years before this came out, uh, I guess Honda made some, like, special tie-in models. I don't remember if they're super cut, but they did some, like, tie-in motorcycles that tied into weathering with you in some capacity. Uh, which apparently sold very well for oh. them, and I had wondered if perhaps part of the reason they agreed to <laughs> this was like, oh, that other weeb shit turned out pretty well for us, let's do it again. <laughs> oh, was that because was that because of the the chase scene at the end of weathering with you? I haven't seen weathering with you, so I have, I have zero context for this. I assume oh, motorcycles <laughs> appeared in, in some capacity. I'm on keep it that you way. Are... That movie sucks. I, I, uh, hey, hey, we you had our piece on that. But uh, the more the other thing I learned, which is uh, take this with a grain of salt, because as far as I know, the actual numbers on this is hard. Would you like Would you like to know how successful the the Honda Super Cub is? How successful? Uh, Apparently, the Honda Super Cub is the best-selling motor vehicle of all time. What? what? The best-selling car of all time is apparently, like, the various myriad iterations of the, uh, I believe it's the Toyota Camry, which is sold, they have, in aggregate, has sold about 50 million cars. Uh, by Honda's estimation, they have sold 100 million Super Cubs since the 60s. Get the fuck out. Get out of here. Maybe, maybe it's, you maybe know it's, what? Uh, maybe, no, I don't, no, 100,000 would be too small. <laughs> Oh man, you, yeah. said, you know what I thought of when you said Toyota Corolla? What? Oh no. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what. This is not the car you need. This, this is, is the car, the car you, you deserve. Deserve. The, the 1999 Toyota Corolla. Uh, the exactly, Corolla. you get it. By the way, I still have that audio file of you reading it pinned on our Discord. That's 
It's good, isn't it? That, that's what, that that's and the dramatic the dramatic reading of a sunfish. <laughs> Which, please, I'm going to ask you to make the disclaimer in the style of the 1999 Toyota Corolla. <laughs> please, um, please, about the, the Honda Super Cub. It's not the bike you want, it's the bike you deserve. Oh, it's absolutely the bike you want. Yes, re- especially after this so It's the bike you... I double checked on the Wikipedia page as of 2017, 100 million Honda Super Cubs sold. And that's a lot of that's a lot of vehicle well, of all time. I don't I don't know how much you guys are into cars at all, but uh, for at least for auto vehicles, Honda has a good reputation for being you know reliable, affordable, and not really one that's going to break down on you. I mean, and most Hondas Dodge don't vehicles. look like sh- most Hondas don't look like shit, unlike the Kia Soul. Um, mm-hmm. That is. I guess this would be the what? time to mention I'm technically driving a Honda. Honda, Honda you know what? Honda's so make, am I. Hondas make a good vehicle. It's a good solid. They do. Barring barring I was... barring that Natasha, my girlfriend, is convinced that she is going to die because some of the white Honda pilots going to run her over. But that's because we live in the suburbs more so than anything else. My gr- my say, girlfriend was... also thinks Honda drivers are assholes, but she's they're still not the biggest enemy in her eyes. I was going to say, Andrew, you don't drive a Honda. You drive a Stephanie. Model 1990. You can't see the face I'm making right now, and I'm not even yeah. Andrew. Megan, Meg, Megan, give us that birthday <laughs> present back. Come on, give us the cake back. Hand, hand it back over. You, you lost out. They both handle very well. Let's move on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why specifically a white Honda pilot, though? I think she's just had bad... You know one of those things where it's like, ah, it's an asshole on the road. What are they driving? White Honda pilot. Like, is it, is it empirically true? No, but it feels true in your soul. <laughs> Fair. Uh, so speaking of things in my soul, uh, I genuinely really like this dub. I, I also really like the show. I know I, I said I own this. I blind bought this. You know, like, the, the actual psychopath that I am. Um, and, and I really think that this dub really exemplifies something that I wish more people who are talking about dubs, like, really got, is that This is the antithesis of the argument that the only good dubs are only from big shonen shows, because for a lot of people, good dub equals how much do you scream your fucking head off? No, this is a dub that is entirely made in the quiet moments and through impeccable sound mixing, which is not something that's uh, usually complimented in dub spheres. So I think that this dub is worth checking out just on like the craftsman side alone but you should just be watching super cub because like like every like i've said i think it's an underrated gem of show and personally i actually have to thank the ann writer uh mercedes claus who gave this show rave reviews as it was airing subtitled which made me want to buy it in the first place Mm. thank you so uh shout out to shout outs to mercedes who did fantastic reviews of this show um, so if you would like to watch... Hang on, Super hang Cup, on, hang on, hang on. What? Did Amon actually give his thoughts, or did he just mention that the Super Cub was the most thing? Oh, right, I didn't thing. actually say anything. Oh, fuck! <laughs> no, uh, you just talked about the Super Cub! Uh, oh, no, no, that's how, no, that's uh, how you convey your your thoughts. Uh, uh, how many units did it sell? Uh, I really appreciate that the show exists. This uh, I'm not... I feel like... Show, I feel like shows this quiet are often not very common these days, uh, and they often feel like they tend not to get a lot of attention because they're quiet and they're calm, and generally speaking, that is not what appeals to the like mass aggregate of weebs that tend to dictate kind of what gets talked about and what gets popular in this day and age. Um, I appreciate like I appreciate that it's here. Um, I think this dub is really good. I feel like it's this is the kind of like really well crafted, really professional dub that a show like this. Uh, needs really to like be any good listening to in English, and I'm really happy that this got you, you know. Did you say this is this guy's first time solo directing a dub? Yes, he's he's, yeah. he's done a lot of engineering work until now. <laughs> no, 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 no the why, actual, which is why it sounds so good. Oh yeah, <laughs> steely, he had assistant steely. directed on stuff, but like it was, it, he's known for mostly being an, yeah. an ADR it's engineer. The, it's the steely dad yeah. of anime dubs. It sounds amazing. <laughs> Oh Are my you God. fucking kidding me? <laughs> uh, I, I, I had it, you know what? I'm not even to. upset. Uh, no, this like this sound. This sounds great. I think there's, there's a lot of just great. 
Uh, like, the performances are great. It's really well put together. It's mixed really well, which is one of those things that, you know, I watch 90% of my anime on either, like, my phone or my TV. I don't hear the, you know, the panning isn't necessarily that obvious, but it sounds great. Um, this is a wonderful show. Go check it out. Like, if we haven't convinced you over the last, like, you know, <laughs> almost two hours, like, I don't know what to tell which you. Which we did not expect to get to this point, but whatever. Uh, I also will, will admit, when I was putting this episode together, I specifically actually reached out to Amon because I knew this was a show he would enjoy. She was correct. Good hey. I think, Good I think my exact wording is, uh, do you want to watch a show about motorcycles? Yeah. About a, I think it was like obscure Japanese motorcycles as if the, the oddest super comments as we now know, like the best-selling motor vehicle of all time. We learned something new but- tonight. But, well, Megan, we already covered the most famous Japanese motorcycle anime. We already covered Golden Boy. <laughs> and Almon was on that, too. Good lord. All right. <laughs> t- t- take us home. Park us in the driveway. Take me home, country roads, to the place that I belong. Uh, that is not a dusty old song, though. That's a very well-known song. Uh, if you like what we do, we are the dub talk. Oh, wait, shit. I gotta talk about the show first, but you can watch that. My bad. Um, if you like this show, you can check it out on the slowly, slowly being shut down Funimation.com or Crunchyroll, where both the sub and dub are up. Uh, if you'd like to purchase this, this is available on Blu-ray, uh, from all of your normal Blu-ray getting places. Uh, if you like what we do, we are the Dub Talk Podcast. You can follow us at Dub Talk on uh, YouTube, Twitter, unfortunately, now that it is under, uh... I, it, it, it's a little musky in here. I'm going to refer to him as, uh, I don't pay an attack as I send the car, the cows on into space. Yeah, that tracks. Um, uh, Tumblr is dead and Twitch and other, other places. You can listen to us on, I believe, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify? Yes. yes. Uh, Spotify and others. If you'd like to support us as a one-time thing, we do have a Ko-fi link, which you can click below. But if you'd like to uh, enable our habits on the normal basis, uh, you can join our Patreon. And at $5, you can get a shout-out on the video like Michelle Travis, Julia W., Nico Robin with the Thiao- Butt with Yowie Hands, Victor Mayborda, and my parents, who are probably listening to me swear way too much when I record. Uh, and at our $10 tier, you can be as cool as Anthony Brown, Carly Westacow, Crimson Echidna, Jacob Wilkin. Fuck. Um, I mixed two people's names together. You can try that so again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that again. Uh, but if you're as cool as some of the other people in class, you can be like our $10 tier members, Anthony Brown, Carly Westacow, Crimson Echidna, Jacob Wilson, Jared Hawkins, Marissa Lenti, and Otaku Anthony. Uh, gentlemen, quickly plug yourselves. My name is Andrew, a.k.a. Classy Spartan. You can find me over on Twitter at MangaMan9000, and aside of doing the Dub Talk podcast-related affairs, you can also find me over on uh, Surreal Resolutions Podcast ONA, where we talk about the latest in anime dubbing... Not anime dubbing news, that's what this podcast is. It's fine. We talk about anime news, and I'm joined by fellow Dub Talk alumni member, Jet. I also play video games on our Dub Talk Twitch, our current game we are starting up this week is I am on the couch while Steph is going to be playing Bendy and the Ink Machine because I don't like spoopy things. Ooh, nice. Haven't played it, but the character designs look interesting. Very cartoonish. Uh, speaking of cartoons, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Noah Clue, uh, where I like to expand discussions about all things in the world of animation. Uh, and I also post pictures of my family because that's what you get to do when you are a family man. And I'm not going to piggyback off of Amon's Dusty Old songs just yet, but I do want to plug uh, a Dusty Old OVA that this show reminded me very heavily of. Uh, there's a three-episode OVA about the end of the world and an android who rides on a motorbike to a cafe that she works at. It's called Yokohama Shopping Log. So if you're interested in something that has the same tone to it, it has that like healing affectation to it, and it's just like a calm, quiet contemplation about life and humanity... Check out Yokohama Shopping Log. Isn't that the one that Seven Seas just picked up and that was like yes. a big deal? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. I, I've heard good things. Yes. And I wish I could say that I, I heard about it before Kenny Lauderdale put a video up on it, but I unfortunately did not. But it's still pretty good. Look, it could, look I, I can't say I heard about it before then, but I also learned about it through TV tropes, which I'm not sure is any more dignified than a Kenny Lauderdale video, <laughs> so you know. 
Touché. Might be less dignified, li- to be frank. That, look, that takes a little more work. I'll, I'll give you credit for that. Yeah. Uh, is it my turn? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. You can find me on Twitter and... I don't know, maybe other places in the future. We'll see. At Amandul... <laughs> yeah. Amandul US, where I talk about uh, just whatever bullshit comes to mind, basically. Uh, and I talk about music <laughs> a lot of the time, and I have a dusty old song. Would you like to hear about it? Hit us. Uh, yes, sometimes picking the dusty old song for episodes is really hard. This one was not. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, wouldn't you know it, back in the early 60s when Honda started selling the Super Cub, then known as the Super 50, in America, uh, it became so popular that someone wrote a, straight up wrote a song about it, and that person was Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. No so you way. can listen to the Beach Boys' Little Honda which is all about how great riding Honda motorbikes are. Get the fuck with with the, with <laughs> I mean it's got Mike Love lyrics so they're a little hokey but like the chorus is great it's amazing. <laughs> Even better. So that was an album cut originally. A bunch of like LA that. session people who are kind of in the same orbit as the Beach Boys led by Gary Usher formed a fake band called the Hondells, recorded a cover of Little Honda and got that onto the Billboard charts. So you can listen to the Beach Boys original or Little Honda by the Hondells. <laughs> because the early 60s American music industry, I love it. That's crazy. Yes. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. If you are, if you'd like to follow me, you can follow me at Quinn Year 2. I mostly shit post on a regular basis, uh, post pictures of my cats uh, uh, and stuff. And I also stream sometimes on our Twitch. Uh, we're going to be having the long, long, long climb that is uh, the critically acclaimed MMO RPG Final Fantasy XIV, which has a free trial with unlimited playtime up to level 60, including the award winning. Heaven's Word expansion. Um, the uh, the male elisons of Ishgard, my beloveds. Um, anyway, with that, guys, I think it's time to ride off into the sunset. Yay! Just uh, you, me, and my cub. And our cubs. Good night, everybody. Make sure, oh, make sure you have some W two on hand. Aloha, rock over Boston. It's the- Rock on Chicago. It's just the little things in life. You meet the nicest like, people on a Honda. Yeah. Make sure you WT40 harass. Good night, everybody. Until yesterday, I had nothing. Now, I have my cub. Good job. One, two, three, sink. Sink. Perfect. Okay, cool. We're done. That's that's taken care of. Um, Sync is what almost happened to she in the last episode. Oh it, it Second was to like, last episode. It was like it felt like an like, inch and a half to you. Deep. <laughs> Please save me. I'm going to die. Girl, girl, like stand up. Girl, girl, it is like you, you, you might have scraped your knee. All right, let's get this started.